Hey, welcome to week eight. We're going to f- continue the trend of the last couple of weeks and focus more on rules rather than, you know, years past, how we kind of focus on what was missed and all that. We're trying to veer away from that. Go so more rules, more positive reinforcement. So we're going to continue that trend. Also, just a quick note moving forward, one thing we're going to do, once we get to week 11 and we're in our playoff evaluation cruise, we're going to stop doing weekly training videos like we've traditionally done it because I don't want to feature it was brought up last year if we if we if we put in crews that are up for evaluation for quarterfinals and beyond it can kind of taint the evaluation process either for or against them so this year moving forward once we hit week 11 we're not going to we're not going to do that so what we're going to do instead we're still going to have videos um, but we're going to focus more on topics. Um, for instance, one is going to be, um, intentional grounding or roughing the past or hadn't decided. We're going to revisit the play, um, from a few years ago, the 3A final. We're going to revisit that. So we're going to do topics like that. So if there's any kind of topic you, um, you want to see us do. That's last seven weeks of the season. Uh, please let us know. You can put a comment here in the video or however you want to do it. But that is one thing moving forward we're going to do. Like I said, that's going to be starting on week 11. So we still got a couple more weeks of this. But, you know, just let us know. Drop us a line if there's anything you want to see specifically, some kind of topic. But moving forward for this week, so I want to talk about batting a little bit. So this is from 972. No player shall bat a loose ball other than a pass or a fumble in flight or a low scrimmage kick in flight in which he is attempting to block in or behind and expand the neutral zone. There is an exception. A K player may bat towards his own goal line, a grounded scrimmage kick which is beyond the neutral zone, and may also bat toward his own goal line, a scrimmage kick in flight beyond the neutral zone if no R player is in position to catch the ball. And that's a 10-yard penalty, signal number 31. So kind of keep this in mind, uh, these next couple of plays. So this play, you're not going to see exactly what happened. Um, We tried to get end zone film from the other team. They said their end zone camera wasn't working, so we can't get a great picture of what happened. I'm going to try and walk you through it. You see we have a uh, botch snap. Or maybe a botch when he's trying to... He may fumble when he's trying to go backwards. Either way, it's a fumble. It's grounded. And then if you see... I don't know if you can see. You see right there. The ball somehow finds its way from the ground into the air. And then into the hands of a receiver try and show it to you from this angle though you really still can't see a whole lot but that's fine we're gonna walk through a couple scenarios you see here the ball's on the ground it's fumbled somehow and it pops pops up in the air uh crew did the right thing here dropped the flag and then we got together and talked about it so let's walk through the there's three possible scenarios um of how that ball got into the air like it did so three possible scenarios only one of them in this situation is legal the first one we talk, the first one we're gonna walk through, is the bat. If the ball was batted, so how you judge it? If the ball was intentionally struck by the offensive player up in the air and forward, that would be that would be considered a bat. Whether it's intentional or unintentional, that is up to you, the referee, to make that judgment. So that is one of the scenarios. The ball was intentionally struck. That would be a bat. So, under the scenario now, that is illegal because the ball was already grounded. It was a fumble that was already on the ground. So, any kind of bat would be illegal. Now, if the ball is in the air still, then they could bat it forward. That's fine. But, grounded, like in that play, it cannot be batted. That says no player. So, offense, defense, no player can bat that ball any direction. So that's the first scenario. The second scenario would be if the ball was unintentionally struck up for it. And this will fall in the definition of a muff. 
that is I think uh, is it rule two two twenty seven maybe. Uh, and a muff is just if a player unintentionally, you know, they're trying to secure possession, they just you know they unintentionally hit it. We usually see that on a kick. Here it is. Uh, a muff is the touching of a loose ball by a player in an unsuccessful attempt to secure possession. So if they if they're trying to get possession of it, and they just kind of unintentionally. No, bat it forward, backwards, or whatever. While they're trying to secure possession of it, that is a muff. And under this scenario, that is illegal. So you can muff a muff a ball. You can muff a grounded fumble if you're trying to secure possession of it. Now, whether or not it's intentional or unintentional, that's the line between batting and a muff. And that is up to the official. He is got to use your judgment there about whether or not you think it was intentional. The third scenario in this play would be if a player gains possession of it and then throws it forward. In this situation, that's still illegal because it looks like it's caught by a um, offensive lineman. Yeah, number fifty-three is the one that is the one that catches it so it's illegal because he's not eligible so if you got three scenarios a bat a muff or a possession and a possession and a toss forward only only the muff in this situation is legal all right so now now let's look at just uh for context let's look at an intentional bat that's legal not intentional a legal bat so this is a player of the k team he comes down there's see, there's no r player in position to catch this he's going to come down and attempt to keep the ball from going into the end zone he's going to bat it towards his own goal line this is perfectly legal now when this happens though there's a couple of things as a deep that got to be running through your mind. First of all, let's just look at mechanics. If you read that this is going to the goal line, we got to get to the we got to get to the goal line. We got to get there fast. We need both officials on the goal line ready to rule. Back judge does a good job. I think he could have got there a little bit quicker, but he's in position. Ideally, we would also want the field judge right here. That way, we have both pairs of eyes. Looking down the line, ready to rule on this. Now, there's two spots we have to mark on this. The first one usually is going to be your back judge that makes this call. But it is where the ball was touched. So in this situation, where that bat occurs. And it looks like he's going to touch it at the one as he, as he comes in to bat it back towards his own goal line. So we get a beam back down where that first touching occurred now we also have to get the spot of where the ball winds up uh where basically where it's dead at so this it looks like right there ball's dead is laying there that's where the ball is going to wind up dead you know this player when he when he comes in to grab it he slides a little bit but that ball essentially is, is dead right there to two so we got two spots we got a bean bag on the one and then we're marking the ball dead at the two. Both these spots are important because remember, unless there's a foul, the um, the team to put this ball in play next are they can take either one of these spots. They can take the spot of, spot of first touching, or they can take the spot where the ball, basically the seceding spot where the where the ball lays dead at. And here, I mean, it's a difference only in a yard, but that's a big that's a big yard in this situation. So remember that as you're when you're when you're the deep working in this situation, you have to work both those in your head. We got two spots: spot of spot of first touching, gonna to be right here about the one, and then we got the seceding spot where the ball winds up dead. Our the R gets their choice of either one. <laughs> 